you know, you can't really talk about well-being in old age without talking about what is good care, you mm. know, and you know how it how it is given and received. Although it's easy to talk about and try to negotiate care on behalf of somebody else, it's very difficult to do it for yourself. Yeah, it is very hard to receive care graciously in a way, you know, from when you've always been independent. Yeah. Yeah. There was one lady who said she would rather crawl on her hands and knees yeah. than ask for care, yeah. uh, but when she actually wanted something, she expected somebody else to pick up the, the hints that she wanted yeah. care, but that yeah. she wouldn't ask for it. Because often people are not very good at saying, well, I actually need help with this, but not mm. that. So the carer has to be very attentive to the sort of messages that people are giving and also understanding the way in which people are responding to mm -hmm. the sort of care and help that, that they're getting in order to not, if you like, take over entirely yeah. Yeah. and make people absolutely dependent on them. Well, there was one lady who managed to get her dancing classes and still she had a very caring attitude to her husband, mm -hmm. but she enjoyed dancing. Now that sort of thing makes a big difference in her life, mm -hmm. didn't it? Mm -hmm. It gave her a, an outside interest as well as just thinking that her life yeah. was mm -hmm. um, yeah. centred around it. So, so it probably helped her to carry, Co carry, carry on, on yeah. coping. Yeah. 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 And also the person who's been cared has got to accept that this must happen. Every one of us has a different attitude towards giving and receiving care. It's shaped by the context of our relationship with others, as well as how we feel about ourselves and what is important to us. Accepting help can entail a transition in self-identity and a shift in power, authority and decision-making within a relationship. When we have been used to being the one who is giving care, it can be hard to acknowledge our own need for help. It can generate complex and sometimes conflicting emotions. In this scene, we return to May, who is now receiving help and support from Ruth, a worker with a voluntary sector re-enablement service. Ruth has been helping to build May's confidence since her stroke. She wants to enable her to leave the house and to enjoy some of the activities she did before. It's open. Hi, May, it's me, Ruth. Oh, I wish you wouldn't leave that door unlocked. May. I'm all right. Just give me a minute. Oh, is one of those for me? Oh, oh dear May, what's happened? Oh, I'm just being daft. It's Robert's tea. Well, where is he? He's gone. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just being really silly. Well, I've never known you be silly or daft. Why don't you tell me what happened? He just... Well, he just... He came in like like a whirling dervish. He, he came to bring me some shopping, which is nice, but he was in such a hurry. I see. Well, he phoned to say he was on his way, so I made him a tea. And then when he got here, I was just trying to get some biscuits out of the cupboard. Go on. He asked if I was all right. And were you? Well, yes. Oh, I thought he'd stay for a chat, I suppose. But he was in a hurry. So uh, I said I was fine. And he gave me a kiss and then he was gone. You must have been disappointed. Well, I, I was all right, I thought. And then, well, then I came back in here and I just... Well, I just saw the tea and I got upset. Oh, May, I am sorry. <sighs> Oh, he didn't mean anything by it. He was just in a hurry. I I'm sure he didn't. It's just that I look forward to seeing him. I understand. Well, anyway, how are you? Oh, I'm all right, May. Is that tea still hot? Oh, oh yes. It's got one sugar in. Oh, perfect. Many of the older people we spoke to had been parents, um, and they were therefore used to caring for their children. And for many of them, it was really very hard to receive care from their adult children. The roles had changed. And the way care was given really affected the ability of older people to receive care. 
So if they felt that care was rushed, people were doing it because they felt they had to, they find it very difficult to cope with the fact that they were in, now in this position of needing to receive care. The thing is, I feel, well, I think that the slower I get, the more impatient Robert gets with me. Why do you think that? Well, I was always such a doer, out and about, busy. I think Robert liked that he didn't have to worry about me. And you feel that's changed? Yes. No. Uh, well, it's not him I blame. I just feel, what use am I now? I mean, I, I feel like a burden. I feel as if I've outlived my usefulness. Well, I don't think that's true. But why do you feel that, do you think? Well, I have to depend so much on others now. I'm not giving anything back. Well, you could argue that you've been giving for years, raised a family, and now you're having a well-earned rest. I just don't like feeling dependent. No, I know you don't. Which is why I was surprised last time we spoke when you said you weren't sure about the shopability scheme. Oh, yes, that. Sometimes when we're interacting with somebody, there are other people who aren't present, but who are present, really, who are important people in that person's life. And so the way that the person is thinking about themselves and their decisions, there are other people present in those thought processes, and so it's really good to be attentive to that and perhaps the difficulties they're having with those decisions. If Robert doesn't have to bring me shopping, when will I ever see him? I see. OK. You're worried that if you use alternate means, Robert won't visit as often? Well, or at all. Do you have the same worry about Malcolm? Oh, no, no. Oh, that's awful, isn't it? But Malcolm and I just get on. We can chat for hours. Does he have more free time than Robert? Yes, I think so. Well, perhaps if Robert didn't have to do the shopping anymore, he'd have more time to pop round and see you. Well, well maybe. Well, you could broach it with him as a good thing. What, do you mean, say, you don't need to bring me eggs anymore, just sit down and drink your tea? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> well, you'd probably see the funny side of that. <laughs> oh, it's not that Robert doesn't care, it's just that... Well, these things, they come more naturally to Malcolm. Yeah, I understand. Robert's always been used to me being independent his whole life. Well, he doesn't really know how to cope with me now. Well, if that's the case, the shopability scheme could be really useful. You'd have more independence and Robert would feel more secure that you were coping and he'd be less worried about you and more able to relax. Yes, that's probably true. I, I might have a chat with him next time he comes round. Oh, I'm sorry I got into such a state. Oh, there's nothing to be sorry for, May. I do get a lot more emotional of late. Well, May, you've been through a lot in the last couple of months. It's perfectly normal to feel unsettled and emotional. I just thought that uh, I'd come out of hospital and just get back to normal. Of course, it doesn't work like that. Well, not yet, no. But things will get better. You've had to adjust to a lot of change and you're doing really well. The key is accepting help. Everybody needs help from time to time, and that's why we're here. Well, you are. It's your job. <laughs> oh, that, I don't mean that like it sounds. I know you love your job, Pet, but what I mean to say is it's not what Malcolm and Robert signed up for, is it? You seem comfortable with the help that Malcolm provides, though. Oh, yes, yes. Well, that's true. But he's not my son. He's not Robert. He's more like... Well, a good friend, I suppose. We have a bit of a laugh. It doesn't feel like... Well, I know that he's helping me, but it feels more like... Well, more like a, a social thing. You've known him his whole life, haven't you? Yes. I was good friends with his mum. She passed on a few years ago. Well, then, I imagine it's really comforting for Malcolm having you around. Yes, yeah, something like that. It's clear how much you love Robert. Maybe he just has a different nature to Malcolm. Oh, yes, he's well, he's more of a doer, like me, I suppose. If something is broken, Robert will fix it for you. 
If you need something, you'll get it. Well, that's very handy. <laughs> Maybe I should just give in over this Skype thing and give him something to do. Skype? Yes. He says it'll help me keep in touch with friends. Well, I think that sounds like a great idea. Might be nice for him to have a project, oh, too. He, he does like a project. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, my head does feel a bit clearer, I must say. Helps to talk things through, doesn't it? Yes, yes, it does. Is there anything else you want to talk about? No, no, not for the moment, thanks, love. Well, we did really well on our walk to the post office last week. Have you managed to get out at all since then? No, I haven't really felt up to it on my own. Do you still feel up to heading out for a bit now? Oh, well, not today, not really, thanks. OK. How about you beat me at Scrabble again? <laughs> yes. All right, then.